So that's the basics. But what if we want to go and do something a little bit fancier? We want to take a sphere and let's say we want to put a, put a clock into it. Or we want to take a sphere and put uh, some type of candle insert into them. Uh, I've got two different uh, illustrations of those. You can pass those around. Look out, the inserts do fall out, so don't tip them upside down while hanging on to the inserts. Can you see that one? So. Pass that one around. And then this guy here is a, is a clock that I've got inserted into here. So he's a sphere. He sits on this little ring for a stand. So you can pass that guy around. Frank, what are you using for your turquoise? Uh, that is a man-made turquoise. Um, it comes from uh, the supplier... Uh, has recently changed names. Um, uh, the uh, supplier is called tuckersturnings.com. And on my website, I have a, a, a handout for my uh, inlay, how I do my inlay work. Uh, that handout needs to be updated. It's got the old reference for the turquoise in it, uh, which... Um, used to be Walston Woodworks, and he sold the stuff to this guy named Tucker. So Tucker, Tucker's Turnings is now the website, and I'll get that, I'll get that updated. But uh, um, it's man-made turquoise. comes in three grits. It comes in a powder, a medium grit, and a, a uh, he calls them chips. Um, and I just use a, a mixture of those three when I do, do my inlay work. Uh, the inlay in these pieces is done with CA glue as the bonding agent. Um, we won't get into that, but that's why I use in small pieces like this. In my bowls, I, I use a, uh, an epoxy, um, a special epoxy called Bond Optic uh, is my bonding agent. Uh, we can talk about that at the end if there's some more time and there's any interest in it. Um, this guy here is a, is a sphere in a sphere, ball in a ball. Um, many of you have seen Al Hockenberry demonstrate these things. Um, they're pretty cool. They're, they're, they're a fun little project to make. Uh, we don't need that guy. Um, I'll pass these guys around. Um, when Al does these, he turns the sphere between cup centers, like I, like I said, and then he has a special donut-like chuck that he puts around the sphere to hold it, so, to hollow the hole. And I'm going to show you now how I do all of the, the hollowing, the drilling, uh, anything like that. I'm going to show you how I do that, and then we'll go and we'll make a, a box out of a sphere. So, so, we'll go back to where we started, where we've got our cylinder, we've rounded off one end roughly, and, um, but before I take it out of the chuck, what I'm going to do so I, can, so I can manipulate this piece later is I'm going to put a tenon on this. Okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a very small tenon down here. That's it. It's about a sixteenth of an inch. Okay? That will now... fit in the chuck and hold the piece. That's all it takes. Now this only works if you have dovetail jaws on your chuck. Okay, the, these jaws that are on here, these serrated jaws on this guy do not work because you, you have to cut such a big tenon before these are gonna grab onto anything that it won't work. The, the key with this is, is that you've got to be able to cut this, this tenon such that when you then reverse the, you know, turn the piece 90 degrees and cut that groove in it, the groove has to cut through that tenon so that when you, when you shape it to the true sphere, the tenon goes away. So this is an example of, of the tenons on there and then the groove, is, the groove has been cut on those pieces. So 
That's all that holds this together, but it gives you enough of a, of a grip that I can do all the things that you saw on those pieces. I can, I don't have to, you know, now that i got a tenon on here, I don't have to jam it in this jam chuck to rough turn the second side. So it saves me that step. And, and when I do, a, uh, if I do my spheres now, I almost do them always this way to put one tenon on them if I'm doing just the sphere. And the only time I use this guy is to turn the final side. Because I, I have to be able to jam it at that point to, uh, to take off where the, where the tenon is. There isn't any other place to hold it. But if I'm doing, let's say, one of the candles where there's an insert put into it, I would rough turn it. Then I would smooth one half of it, drill my hole for the, for the candle, whatever candle there is. Then I use that hole to rechuck it to do, the second, to do the second half. And that one never sees the jam chuck at all. So anytime there's an insert like that, they never, I, know, I don't use this guy at all. Now, this guy, when it comes to softer woods, still can give you a more perfect sphere because you're clamping onto the wood and the wood can be harder or softer on different sides of the wood. It's not necessarily going to be as true as jamming something into this where you're, you're essentially holding onto the outside edges of the, of the piece. So this has its usefulness, uh, you know, even in just doing the spheres. But because almost all the spheres that I do don't have to be 100% perfect because they're being used either in, you know, put inside of something else or they're done like the candles or the clocks or things like that for, for small gift items, this is close enough. This will get me as close as I want it to be. And uh, I, don't, I don't worry too much about it. If they're slightly off, just a little bit of tweaking with sanding in the right place will make them look like they're perfect. So they're, they're fine from that perspective. But this is very useful. Uh, the big ones, like you see on my website, that are in those art pieces, those are hollow spheres. So this is how I hold the sphere to hollow it out. So I'll actually do the same set of steps. I'll, I'll put that tenon on here, rough this out, cut the groove, do one half of the sphere. So I've got one half sphere done. So it's much like having this. So it's half done. It's just that there's a tenon down in here. Then I'll, I'll uh, drill my hole, do my hollowing. The only thing that you're doing when you're doing the hollowing is the bottom half is a, is a slight guess because you're a little bit bigger down there yet. You know, so you have to give a little bit of leeway when you hollow, if you're truly hollowing out a sphere so that you, uh, you know, you're still going to be able not to have a hole in it after you hollow the thing out. So... Are there any questions on that before I show you how I then use this to make a box? All right. We will start with this guy here. And I'll just show you the layout of this guy before I start to turn one that I've already got partially turned already. So the layout is almost the same as the regular sphere. So you take the diameter. So that's eight. So half of eight is four centimeters. So what I'll do from the one end is I'll mark four centimeters. Then I'll add on an amount that will take into account I need to part this thing off, and I have to have enough space for a tenon to fit a lid onto. So that's what this next spot in here is. This is the, this is the area that is going to be the tenon for the, for the box, and enough room so I can part this thing off. Usually somewhere about in the eight millimeter range is, is about right. And then from that, then I add on the second half of the sphere, another four centimeters, and that's what the bottom line is. So the box is really from here. This is really the center line of your, of, well, I should say, this will end up being the center line of the box. The tenon is going to be down here. This is the center line, and this is be the other half of the box. So that when it's put together, that center section is, is, is gone, basically. Does that make sense? But I have to allow for that in the, in the setup. So with that in mind, I'm going to chuck one in that's already got that marked, already been rough turned. 
and there's a tenon on both ends. So there's that small little tenon on both ends because it's a box. I have to hollow out the top of the box and I have to hollow out the bottom of the box. So it requires putting that tenon on both sides. So we're close to that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to part this off on that center line. Before I do that, what I like to do is I'm going to mark two little ledger lines on this, on this piece. Those two lines will tell me how the box fits so that it matches the grain the best way. We're going to be taking out over a quarter inch in here because of the tenon and parting it off. When I put this back together to actually shape the sphere, I like to know that it's back together exactly the way it needs to be. And those two lines are the way to match it up. You are not going to be able to match the grain from the, from the top side to the bottom side when you take that quarter inch out. So that's what those two lines will tell you. That will tell you how it lines up correctly. So in this shape here, we're going to part it off. Remembering not to get rid of my center line. Save that for later. Following end grain now, so this is a lot more grabby than doing face grain. The tool likes to skip a lot and skate, so if you ever get this to skate off the front side, front edge of the piece, make sure you're engaging the gouge fully closed right at dead center, and then you can open up and make your cut. But if you start that, just get that tip to start. Then you can open up the gouge and make your cut without having it skip across the face. And since we're parted right at center on the sphere, we don't want that to skip across the face because otherwise I'd have to face it off and, well, we'd have to make a smaller sphere, but um, to keep that in mind. Now, you also have to keep in mind when we're hollowing the sphere, that we still have to cut that groove all the way around on the opposite direction. So we don't want to make this the thinnest wall box that you've ever made. We want to allow for in case we have to cut a little bit. Now the dead center should be the diameter we want the, the sphere to be. So when I cut that other line in there, that other groove in there, it really shouldn't be cutting very deep right at dead center. But I always like to make them be a little bit, have a little bit of thickness there. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we need to be able to tell how deep we are. And I also like to ha have my, my sphere boxes that the inside be as perfect of a sphere as the outside is. So how do we do that? Well, you make yourself little templates. And this was... Uh, 72 millimeter, that's pretty close, 275, I don't think I've got a bigger one. Yeah, this is going to have to be close enough. So I've got, a little, I've got a little circle template here. I've got a line drawn dead center on it. So when I stick that in, 
and this is the diameter of what this is supposed to be. So I know that if I hit my center line on center, then I've got the same thickness on the inside all the way down through. Um, this should be just a little bit bigger because this is a little, the inside is a little bit bigger diameter than this, but this will be close enough. Um, and it can also tell me whether or not, if I look at the template as it sticks in there, it'll tell me where there are high spots or low spots uh, on the inside as well as I'm going through. Um, if, the, if the bowl gouge becomes too hard to use inside, you can use whatever round nose scraper you want. I mean, I can come in here with, a, with an easy wood tool, you know, as a scraper and, and get this thing scraped clean. I can come in with another round nose scraper if I want to. Sometimes when you're doing sphere box, it's real easy to come in with round nose scraper to deal with it. About an eighth of an inch away. Let's see if this other one will work just as easy. One other thing you want to do is make sure at the top little bit has got straight shoulders. Uh, I didn't bring my bedan tool. That's what I would normally use to, to make that with. But that top, you're going to put a tenon into there. So that needs to be straight to fit the tenon. You don't have to, but if you don't, the tenon has to taper to fit the curve that, that uh, is the box. So sometimes I just go in and make that, that straight. Another eighth of an inch. I'll use this guy he was working. And that's again where we'll say close enough. Top is done come back. We'll fit the ten into that. I won't hollow out the bottom part of it. It's just a repeat of that. We'll go on to the other steps of uh, of making the sphere. When I fit tenons, I like to fit the out right at the outer edge of the tenon first. Because if I goof it up, I can always cut that off and recut it. There's always an exercise in still a ways away. Now that I know where the fit is, the trick here is if I didn't cut that 
straight down the sides. It'll fit tight and then it'll fit loose and then it'll fit tight and it's fitting still too tight. This far away from making it too loose. What do you think? Now, what if that gets on too tight and you don't have a hole in the bottom to knock it? <laughs> With the sphere, it's a big problem because uh, the sphere, unless you're going to do threaded lid, a threaded lid on it, which you can do because you can hold both the top and the bottom and, and, and do your thread chasing on it. So it's um, uh, a threaded sphere box would be great. With these, you can't make them. You really cannot make them tight. If you, if you make them tight, the only place that there is to grab the lift off the lid is right at the, right at the center. If you make them too tight, there's no, you absolutely cannot get these apart if you make them too tight. Uh, so I make these, I try to make the tenon initially reasonably snug, but such that I can still pull it off. And then at the very end, I'll sand that just a little bit so that it'll just, it'll just come right on off. I'll pass. That's a finished one, so people can look at that while I. No, I don't. I have never threaded them because I'm just. I, that's not a skill that I have. I've always made them just these loose fit boxes, but I think the threading would be fine. Okay, I'm going to try that. I think it's a little snug yet. I brought a knife, so in case I have to, I can pop it off that way. So we're back fit together again. Now, would you normally go ahead and hollow that? I would normally hollow the bottom. Yes, I would go through, hollow both sides. And then what we're going to do now, but I'm not going to bother hollowing that out because you've seen that already. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reverse, we're going to take it out and turn it 90 degrees into the jam chuck and cut that groove in it. 